Beautiful day in a beauty world. Beauty world. Could you be mine? Could you be mine? Or would you be my neighbor? Hey, kapow. Kazanga and all that. What's up? Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. Today's an exciting day. I just uh, got a package in the mail. There is something uh, kind of monumental and important about this moment. Um, so before I get into the pomp and the circumstance, um, let's skip a few shout outs. Um, I'd just like to say uh, hi to uh, Stephen from Ben Craft Hats. Uh, if anybody out there is visiting New York uh, or in the New York area and you're looking for a real deal old school hat shop that still steams your hats and everything, Ben Craft is the place. Um, a lot of my uh, ex colleagues are, are going there and, you know, having a lot of fun and stuff. It's a great place. Um, Sunday is a really good day to go. Um, it's just the day I always go. I always see Steve and I figure Sunday is kind of like a mellow day. You know, it, you don't have the same hustle bustle as the week. So, um, you know, you want to speak to Steve and you could also let him know that, uh, you know, you watch Kevin's videos and Kevin said, you know, you got these real deal Borsellinos from before 2017, before they started using uh, whatever for, you uh, in the, uh, I thought I saw a rainbow, sorry. It's actually, it's kind of like a, uh, from looking at this ring light, it just made kind of like a ring, uh, like a floater. So it wasn't a rainbow. So anyway, um, <laughs> false rainbow. Bencraft still has the real deal. These hats are going to disappear and be like the white whale. Um, you know, hopefully not by this time next year, but by next year or a couple of years, they're going to be extinct. So um, you can watch my video on how to date a Borsellino um, and to tell. It doesn't work for older, older vintage ones, but it works for the stuff in the 2000s and the 90s and, you know, the later stuff. Um, it was a good place to look. But you know what? Watch the video. I don't want to go off on too many tangents because these videos get too long, okay? So, yeah, uh, just a good shout out. Um, a shout out to Charlton. Um, a shout out to um, Sam, to Mr. Sam Buck, who is uh, an awesome employee um, at another hat shop. And uh, just want to give him a whoa, what's up? Uh, and um, to Cynthia, uh, another very fine um, supporter of the show who's uh, always been very nice and cool, uh, her whole family. Um, who else? Just, uh, I want to give a shout out to Daisy, definitely. Daisy has been one of uh, the biggest uh, supporters and friends to me since the very beginning. Oh, she has been so awesome, very cool, the siren. It's hard to keep going when it's sirening. Oh, it's, it's an ambulance, okay. Now I feel bad doing a siren dance. Somebody's in there like fighting for their lives or something. All right, a lot of elderly people out here. There's probably some old lady broke here, I'm sure. Um, I say that so callously, right? What's wrong with me? Anyway, Daisy has been awesome. Um, I didn't want the siren to be in her tribute because she's always been just like a really positive uh, spirit and um, so many people, Roger, Roger, thank you. Um, and um, Dave Stott, thank you, Dave, the awesome uh, moderator on the Hats and Guitars Facebook group. Um, good news is these hats that I've uh, designed, uh, the KTG Customs, KTG hats are shipped. They went out uh, yesterday. 
Okay, so um, by tomorrow or tonight, tomorrow I'll have tracking information. They'll be in our hands like any day now. Um, it's amazing. So I have a green one and a silvery gray, mist gray one coming, but the mist gray I think is going to go to somebody else. Um, I kind of promised somebody else they could take that for me, so. I'm going to stay with just the green, and I think the next go around, um, batch two, we'll start taking orders for them very, very soon. So if anybody is really, you know, hyped up about these cool hats, um, we're going to start showing lots of pictures of people. You know, anybody who wants to show themselves wearing the KT Cheek um, custom hat, just email it to me at Kevin Todd Gerber um, at gmail.com, and. Um, We'll make a nice montage showing everybody wearing those cool hats and stuff, you know. Yeah, so thanks everybody who supported me. Um, when I, you know, first left um, the uh, board collective, I was feeling kind of vulnerable and, you know, a little bit scared. And uh, all these people boosted my ego, helped me in so many different ways. Uh, you know, I walked into Steve's store to do a story on his shop, but you know, I really, I just wanted to talk to him because he was somebody that I knew from years ago, just kind of saying hi and meeting him at like the hat dinners and stuff, you know. They do have that, there are hat dinners, where like hat executives and hat shop owners like give each other awards and stuff and they eat like a fancy dinner, yeah, they do that. But anyway, um, he's one of the super cool guys in the industry that I've known for a really long time. And when I left the, the Borg, he was just super, super nice to me and warm. And uh, he's been the same way to all of my friends and colleagues. And uh, all the people that used to come and visit me, you know, um, at the old shop on Fifth Avenue, they've been visiting Steve over at Ben Craft Hatters in Brooklyn. And um, it's been really good, warm, authentic experience for them. And they've been coming home with these pre-bankruptcy borsalinos which nobody has like you know i'm sure there's probably you know a couple places that have them but you know you have to have a reason for them to you know be be there you know and steve is awesome but he didn't really have a good uh web system um intact for people to know exactly what he had so um he, he's finally starting now to upgrade his web thing you know it should be up I'm sure, you know, soon, but I'm sure that's taken a while. But um, because of this, some of the old hats still remained in his warehouse because they weren't represented well electronically. So you guys get them at the old price. I don't know if you know, but the prices went up from like 350 retail to like 500 retail. Um, they raised the prices on, uh, on the shop owners too. They went up like 150 bucks or something. So um, you're getting them at the old price with the cool old quality. That's what's amazing about Bencraft. You know, they still have this stuff. So anyway, let's get to the monumental moment. It's here, okay? That stretches like this. Okay, the very, very least, if you get a great deal on it somewhere, you'll find a broken one for 300. If you can find a broken one. More typically, a broken one will be like 500. A good one will be up in the thousand to 1500 bucks. Um, you can find these things, they are out there. Um, they're antique, there's not a lot of them. And uh, right now, we've been uh, developing it um, more in my consultation and TJ's uh, engineering skills, building skills. Uh, he takes two weeks to build these things. And um, he was doing all the curves without a lath, lathe, lath, lathe, lath, lathe, without a lathe, lath. Uh, I think he's updated his shop now. But um, the guy makes amazing stuff. Uh, we had three different systems, pulley systems, and finally, you know, I convinced him of how strong these things have to be. He was like, are you crazy? Really? I said, yes, this is how strong these things are, you know and um, they passed the test. So right now I'm gonna unbox my very first one. I've never seen it in, in person, but uh, the, we've been working for a very long time and um, TJ is an amazing, amazing guy. Um, right now the only place you could get them is through Hats and Guitars. 
um, you contact me, you place an order, okay, and uh, we ship it out to you right away. Um, we make them in batches of four, now we're starting to make them in batches of six. So generally you won't have to wait. Um, there's usually one of them already uh, ready to go. So without further ado, let's um, try to find the world's first affordable table stretcher. Let's check it out. The Hat Attack. I suggested that name. I really didn't think he was going to go for it, you know? <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, I'm like, you dirty rat, touch my hat. It's kind of me, you know, that I didn't think. But yeah, it's the Hat Attack. Yeah, you know, let's check it out. Now it doesn't have a pedestal base, so the footprint is bigger, but you do get um, the ability to bolt it down to a workbench, which gives you a lot more leverage. Um, all right. Put my glasses here. Put on my glasses, not the exacto. Nice job, gorilla tape here. Did a good shipping. I think this thing went out yesterday. We were just talking about it. Oh my gosh. I don't do unboxings very often, but uh, I, I wanted you guys to see it at the same time that I saw it. Thank you so much for purchasing your Hat Attack Custom Hat Stretcher. I personally hand make each one, which takes two weeks to complete. Hopefully this will give you many years of enjoyment. Happy stretching, TJ. Awesome job. Handcrafted with pride. By a very fine gentleman. Be generous funny and talented gentleman, TJ. So yeah, um, they are basically available here. You let me know. You email me, Kevin Todd Gerber at gmail.com. Just let me know, I'll tell you how to get it. Cue the dramatic music. This baby over here. Very 
very smooth movement. This thing would stretch it big enough for like Godzilla. It goes way past an eight. It goes to like a, I don't know, you know, like the, what do they call the xenomorphs with those big long heads? It would go that big, like xenomorph size. All right, let's do the deed. This is an over stiffened Cygnus beaver hat. It's extremely well, well made, very hard to stretch. It's like a Western almost. You can see it's super, super hard to stretch. Um, it's been over stiff and somebody put tons of hairspray on it, just a little too much. But they sent it to me as a gift to, you know, do whatever I want with it. Um, so it turned out to be a beautiful test hat because the hat itself is super well made. I mean, it's strong, like an ox, this hat, the way it's made. Um, the, the reed, just the way Cygnus blocks his hats, he blocks them like six, seven times and stuff. Uh, wait a minute. Yeah, is this a Cygnus? Oh no, this is a Rocher, I think. Huh. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> so uh, TJ tested with the Cygnus. I'm testing with a Rocher. This is a, um, a $365 Ro Rocher, what will it called again? Every day a new JJ style leaves my uh, brain cells. Uh, the Valencia was the beaver version, and the rabbit version was called the Seville? The Seville? Yeah, this is one of those. So what I'm going to do is, it's a 59 now. I believe they run tight? Yeah. So it's above my ear. 59, it fits, I guess, kind of like a classic, classic guy's hat. Not oversized. Test this sucker out. <laughs> Bubble wrap. <laughs> now put it all the way down. And some heavy duty hardware. Serious hardware. Very thick, could smell the oil, it's lubed. Look how hard this hardware is. He's got that cool paint on it, that metal enamel paint, whatever you call it. Nice. Even my old fashioned steamer it doesn't have a painted uh, hardware. It's pretty neat. It's just like raw brass. through the hat. This one is a little bit looser. This one's got a little, little bit more torque. But I think that's also because I'm stretching it way further. I'm going pretty far. Yeah. Okay, there, there we go. Okay, so when it gets to the hilt like this, what, what I generally do, I give it some more steam. You got a nice handle here too to hold it. Right down here. It's nice. Steam it again at the seam. This will give you a little bit more headroom to, uh, to stretch. It'll soften the seam more. Yep, to go further. And it'll stop. Get 
stain a little more. And let me show you what I'm doing there. hitting the back seam of the hand. Alright. Lightning cool. Lightning cool. I don't want to go nuts. But you can see this is severely overstretched. Look at that. Look how much I stretched that. It's almost doing this puckering open road thing because it's under so much pressure. Now, as far as how much to stretch, you're going to have to get a feel for your own stretcher. Now, yes, you have to overstretch, yes, but every hat is going to stretch completely different. A soft hat is going to stretch a million times easier than, well, not a million times, ten times you know, easier than a hard hat. So you have to get a feel for it stretch conservatively at first um, you know like if you need to stretch this much you know stretch this much and then double it see how that works um, if that's not working triple it quadruple it whatever um, and you'll get a feel for your stretcher but bear in mind that every hat is going to stretch differently depending on how soft it is how, you know, how hard the sweatband is, the reed, the felt, western versus, you know, dress. You know, you can just tell by pulling a hat how tight it is. Okay, that's really stretched. Now, traditionally, after a stretch, you want to give it a little side pull, unless you're stretching long oval. If you have somebody who's, you're just ovaling out the hat, you know, then you only want to stretch that way. But you give it a little side pull like that, and that kind of makes it, it evens it out a little bit. It's kind of, you know, they don't teach you that, but that's just something I do. Because um, when you take it off the stretcher, it's a little bit overly looking. So this usually just, that cures it. Um, there's all kinds of stretching, you know, you can even stretch sideways the other way. Um, there's some people who need wider, um, wider head uh, hats. Generally European, African, uh, heads are more longer where Asian heads are slightly more rounder um, where the, you know sometimes um, their hats will buckle a little because they're side you know they're pressing the sides only because the hat was designed with this oval um, oval block you've heard of long oval well most hats are just a regular oval and then you know if your head is like this you're a long oval but most of us are just regular oval. But there are some people who are actually round, you know. It all depends on just, you know, your parents' heads, I guess. You know, everybody's heads are just a little different. Uh, and um, some of it has to do with your genealogy and stuff. But, uh, you know, we all come in different sizes and shapes. You're going to find that most people will be good. This is kind of like stretching oval for the most part for everything. Um, but you want to give it a little little fix like that. That's my thing. Um, and generally that will round it out, you know. Um, things to look for. Um, these seams right here. One, two three, four, they're going to start to stretch, like really stretch like that. But you're going to see them stretching further beyond your belief and you're going to think they're going to pop, but they won't. They'll take a little stretching. You want to watch those and get them to the point where you think they might, you know, they're not going to pop, but if you steam it anymore, it might pop. So in other words, let them stretch out a little bit, but that's it. Don't let them stretch out like crazy. You know, as soon as they start stretching, you're like, okay, they're stretching. Now that's fine. The stitches, the tack stitches. Um, will it make that loose? 
No, um, your band won't be loose. As soon as everything relieves tension, it starts relaxing and, and it'll come back. Um, there's an elasticity to this stuff. Okay, so remember, don't stretch too much without the steam, okay? Going like this, it's gonna kind of stop at a certain point. And then at that point, you want to add some steam to get you know more more headroom. Oh my God, that's huge! All right, let's do some more more steam in here. Okay, so we're gonna hold it under this steam. Let's get that back seam really tight, uh, really like. You know, hot and flexible by heating it up there we, we make the hat uh, more flexible so that back seam doesn't pop the things you want to watch for is that you know so you steam to make that avoid you know like stressing and then you want to watch those tack stitches to the wall you need. Okay, get this all the way down to the top open your crown don't steam the crown only steam the back it. I like to put my hand right there to feel it. Alright, let's go a little more. Now I feel the tension tightening up. I can't really stretch anymore. I mean, I could if I really, you know, put the hammer down, but that's telling me, okay, time to steam it some more. And when I loosen up, I'll be able to crank it a little more easily. You'll have the tension kind of guide you like that. And as you steam it like this, you could even hear the stitches popping as they soften up. Hear it? Good stitch pop. I love that sound. But the idea is to turn it while it's hot. You know, don't wait. Turn it slowly. Watch the stitches. It's okay if they're stretching. You're going to want to let the hat cool completely. Let it stay on the stretcher until it feels completely cool to the touch. I'd say at least a half an hour. Um, more is better. If you could leave it on there for an hour, for two hours, three hours, it's better. You want it to be completely cool and completely dry to the touch. Uh, so when the hat is stable, then you take it off the stretcher. Uh, some people like to leave it on overnight or for two nights or a week. I don't really believe that it helps anymore, um, but you know, go for it if you want to do it for a week. It's not going to hurt the hat. I believe that uh, as long as you do it and the hat is completely dry, completely cool, nothing is really going to change after that. So um, that's it. Take it off the stretcher. And I'll be showing a lot more uses for the hat stretcher very soon. Uh, it's got like a million and one uses. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to hit thumbs up if you liked it. Thanks, guys. The new batch of KTG hats are about to hit our doorstep any day now. So I want to see you guys posting a lot of pictures of yourselves wearing those KTG customs on the Hats and Guitar Facebook group and share it on social media. Let everybody know. Um, if anybody's interested in buying one, 
I will be taking orders very soon. In about a week, you're going to hear a lot about KTG. I'm going to put the whole menu up, all of the choices, and you'll be able to place some orders. Um, so just stay tuned, everybody.